Hi, this is Mark for Ableton Daily. Creating reverb tails very easily in Ableton Live. I'll show you how to do this right here. Memories will fade away. I uh, I know of a quick, very quick and easy way to to record those reverb uh, endings off of. Uh, any kind of sound. I've just used a vocal because it has uh, nice transients in the sound. Uh, so first what I'll do is just start off with a new live set. So I'll just, uh, I, I won't save this. All right. And so here we are. And by default, I do have uh, a few plugins already applied to my channels just because when I'm creating my music, uh, I usually run to these plugins automatically anyway, so I made a template. Uh, but what we need to do is get some type of reverb, uh, reverb plugin on this channel, and also uh, a sample uh, of anything really, uh, mostly something uh, like a vocal or a drum sound or something like that would work just fine. Uh, but to start off with, uh, I'm just, I already have a vocal over here that I've already picked out for this tutorial, so... Memories will fade away. So Memories will fade away. I'll just use this. I'll click and drag this into the timeline. Uh, somewhere around here is just fine. And then, uh, again, yes, we'll, we'll need to get a reverb onto this channel here. So uh, I'll just simply use Ableton's built-in reverb. Uh, I'll come up here, make sure I'm in the audio effects folder, and uh, come down here to reverb. And I'll just drag this into the channel. Now, for recording reverb tails, you're going to want to have a very long decay time. Uh, so that's very important. Um, I would turn up the quality to high, and the size, pretty good. Uh, about 100 on the size. It just all depends on the sound that you're looking for. Uh, the stereo width, uh, completely optional. I'll keep that at 100 for now. And decay time, uh, we could probably increase the decay time a little bit. And so uh, 14 seconds is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just play this, by, uh, play this back and see how it sounds. Memories will fade away. Okay, so pretty long decay time. I can, I, you know, I can even shorten that a little bit. So a super easy way to record reverb tails on any sound, and you can do this, you know, when you're working on a project, right in the middle of a project. You don't have to have another program or or anything like that. All you have to do is create two loop points after the sample. Uh, starting after the sample. You can start directly after, like you could drag this a little closer like that. And then, so this loop start point here, uh, or this, this region that I've created, um, you're going to adjust and extend it for as long as you want to record the reverb tail. Okay, so uh, this is, I mean, almost, it's probably too long, but I'll, sometimes I like to record longer than, than I need, and then I can go back and make the, the clip shorter. Well, what you'll be doing is recording the reverb tail on another audio track, just to keep it separate. It's really nice work, working this way. So you'll need to arm the track, like let's say like another track just below that or above it, and then very, very important right here where it says it's defaulted to external in, Click on this and you'll find an option that's called resampling and basically Ableton uh, records back to itself and that's a very nice feature uh, that we have on these audio channels. So after you have that, uh, what you'll need to do uh, is do a set a punch in and punch out. So up here on the control bar here. Uh, this is a punch-in switch, and this is a punch-out switch. Uh, you 
don't necessarily need to have the punch out. You can just stop the recording if you want. Um, I want, I don't really want it to loop, so you'll probably want to turn the loop off. Uh, but just for fun, I'll go ahead and set up a punch out so everything is completely done automatically. Um, so we've armed this track, set the resampling. All we have to do is just, uh, you know, I could click over here and, you know, prepare the, uh, prepare live for recording. So I can just hit the record button and then I'll just hit play and it'll play. And as soon as it reaches the beginning of this, uh, loop start point here, uh, it'll start recording. So it's just going to punch in by itself. Watch, here we go. Memories will fade away. Let me go ahead and try that again and hit the record. There we go. Memories will fade away. And you can see that being recorded right there. There you go. And it'll stop by itself right about there. All right. And I'll go ahead and stop it. And let's solo this track and see what we have. So it makes for good special effects and, and things like that. And, and as you saw at the beginning of the video, a uh, very common thing to do is to have the reverse reverb uh, just before a sound or a vocal or something. And to reverse the sounds, it's fairly easy. Just double click on it to make sure that's, that it's selected. Uh, and uh, I'm going to turn this warp off for now. But just right here where it says REV is just that that means reverse. So if we click that, it's going to reverse the sound. There you go. And I'll just uh, drag this over here and position this uh, just in front of it. And chop this down a little bit. There we go. And so now I've dragged up the reverb tail clip that we've recorded on audio number two or channel number two. And I've dragged that up to channel number one. And so now we have this in uh, continuity here. So I can unsolo this and we can listen to the whole thing. Memories will fade away. I can even return the reverb off that track uh, just so it, it's more in your face. Let's go ahead and play that back and hear what it sounds like. Memories will fade away. Yeah, there you go.